What's up, man? How you living? All good, all good. Good? Yeah, yeah. All right, go. So, <clears throat> you kind of read over kind of how the column go? Yeah. All right, so pretty straightforward. Um, the... Well, a little crazy, but we're live. What are you, what are you got going on? What are you doing? Uh, appointment in the morning. I've, I've been going on every single appointment this past month. Um, yeah. Just kind of auditing and all that shit. Um, so I had an appointment, had this, had that. But we're back. <laughs> we're back. Did, uh, did you have, how many? You have ten people that's working with you right now in your office. Ten or eleven, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> are you? Are they mostly agents? Acquisitions yeah. agents or just real estate agents or what? Yes. Yeah, so mainly acquisitions. Okay. Yeah. We have two dispo, but um, five acquisitions. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a little mix of of, of on market and off market and stuff too. Right, right, cool. Well, <clears throat> so what I'll do here is I'm going to count down from just from three. We'll kind of get the call started. I'm going to intro you. You're the 60th episode. That was cool. Love it. Um, I'll intro you, intro you with the intro that you wrote for me. And then what I'll do is kind of hand over the mic and we'll give the listeners a little bit more about your background, kind of what you're focused on now. Then we'll just talk for 30 minutes, man. We'll just have a good conversation about real estate, Miami, real estate in general, what you got going on, and uh, we'll end the call off with the five question lightning round. Yeah. Did you read over what those questions were? Yeah, I got it. Like, what's the best advice, book, stuff like that? Yeah, yeah pretty straightforward. So, wow. pretty simple, man. Uh, yeah. Excited to have you on. Yeah, dude. Thanks, man. Sorry getting on late, but we're live. That's you good. know what? I get it. It's part of life, dude. It is. So, um, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Three, two, one, and welcome, 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 everybody, to the 60th episode of the Hashtag Investors Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bauer. Today, we have Ra- Raul Balou out of Miami. Raul, how are you, man? What's up? What's up, man? Thanks for having me, bro. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I love you. Love you being here. Excited to chat uh, for a little bit. A little bit about Raul, like I said, he's down in the Miami market. Uh, he started investing in real estate at 21 years old with the hopes of improving the quality of service for both buyers and sellers alike. His main focus is real estate investing, and he was able to grow his company from humble beginnings into a local established brand. He quickly realized that being the best version of himself and in essence doing this for other people was not only his driving force, but the ticket to success. Currently, he's got uh, some students that he guides through the process with the ultimate goal of helping them grow their own business. Transaction after transaction, he has discovered his passion for helping others uh, achieve success in the industry, specifically those starting from scratch like he did. Having pursued an economics degree at Florida International University, he proceeded to engage in the exciting and fast-paced industry of investment real estate, being passionate about uh, looking for the best and most efficient ways to search for discounted deals and pass them off to other investors so they can turn a profit has fueled him to progress as, quick, as quickly as possible. He's now only 25 years old, but he sold over 300 homes. He owns a small rental portfolio of single family houses, currently operating with a team of 10 people and counting, and he's aim, he aims to constantly learn so he may improve the way uh, they help investors succeed in real estate investing. So that was a lot, man. That was but, a lot. Uh, appreciate you being here. Oh, thanks, man. I like that intro. I didn't know the whole thing was going to be read. I was shortened it a little bit. But <laughs> <laughs> now I made myself, I put myself way too high up there now. <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know, I think it's it's good. I, yeah. Sometimes I like these longer, you know, kind of explanations about you because it gives a little the listeners more of a background of who you are, right? Right. So, all you listeners out there, so that you know, we, Raul and I are in the same, uh, one of the same mastermind groups together. We actually just spent some time down in the Dominican Republic yeah. masterminding, and of course, it was a great time. Um, but, Raul, why don't you give the listeners a little bit more about your background in addition to what I've already mentioned? I know, right? It's a mic drop. Let's just, let's just end this right now. I don't need any. <laughs> well, dude, so, um, yeah, man, yeah. Dude, thanks again for having me. Um, yeah, so kind of like what, what the intro said, you know, I started younger, um, 
And you know, I was going to school. I was um, you know doing my economics degree, uh, bachelor's degree. I was also selling cars uh, for my dad's dealership. And that's kind of like when my whole entrepreneurial mind started like forming in there. Uh, when I saw that I had to like talk to people to sell cars and I had to like, and I wouldn't eat, you know, I physically wouldn't have any money unless I had to sell something. And I think that's the best, um, it doesn't have to be car sales, but I think starting off in sales young is probably the best thing you can do for yourself. Not only, yeah, dude, not only for entrepreneurship, but for like your mind, you, you know, you get to like talk to people and get out of your comfort zone because you have to. But anyway, so I was doing that and, um, then I'm like, fuck, you know, I, I was kind of bumping up a little bit. I started, you know, I became like the internet manager and blah, blah, blah. And I liked it, but I'm like, man, I feel like there's more for me. I don't know what else to do. Like, um, and then I, I've kind of always knew about real estate. I always knew that it existed. I knew that people were making money in it. Um, my, my stepdad had just like flipped, fixed and flipped his first like house or two. And I asked him like, oh, you know, how does that work? You know, what's the deal with that? And he told me, he's like, well, uh, it's pretty cool, but you should learn because there's someone called a wholesaler who sold me the house. I'm like, what is that? So then I looked it up on, on podcasts and I found uh, Sean Terry's. Um, and then it's probably like a product of a lot of us on that mastermind. I don't know how many of us on that mastermind started from his podcast, but dude, that's pretty much it. What happened? It's it, it, it's it. It's it was Sean's podcast. It was Justin's podcast. It was you know the, the major players out there that are, are helping to provide that that information for people, right? And yeah. it, it's cool to be part and connect with all those guys. That's for sure. Yeah, it's super cool. And I always think about it, man. I don't know how people don't take advantage of all these podcasts. Like, there's so much cool free content out there. But but anyways, so I, I listened to a podcast, but I was just you know I was just a kid with with. I wanted to make some money and I wanted to kind of be, I didn't, I wasn't really thinking about like being free so much. I was more just thinking of like, I want to be more free than I am now. It's all I want. I was working weekends, 70, 80 hours a week, making good money, but like just wasn't what I wanted. So that's kind of how I got started, man. On a podcast, uh, I wish I had a more glamorous story. I mean, I, I I come from a pretty good family, meaning, you know, money wise and stuff, but they didn't give me anything. My allowance was actually 50 bucks a week. <laughs> and I had a car that the gas was $40 a week. So, which was good. Yeah, good much. <laughs> yeah, so I had to like take, take kids home from school for like 10 bucks and so I could take my girlfriend out at the time. But anyway, dude, that's how I started and just learned enough. I got like a local mentor, learned how to do one deal and then just kept going and figuring shit out until you do 10, 20, 30. Yeah, man. You know, this podcast is listened to by a lot of different people. We got experienced investors, we have new investors, we have you know, people that are in fix and flips, wholesaling, multifamily syndication, commercial investment, every, all the different pieces. And I think it's important for people to understand, you know, these, you know, you said your story is not glamorous, but the reality is, is that's, that's what most people are, right? Yeah. I mean, you saw an opportunity, you wanted to make a better life for yourself. So what you do, you took a hold of it, you found a mentor, you figured out how to do it. Right, so that is the exciting part. Let's dive in now. Um, now that we have a little background story about you. Let's dive in. What does your business look like now, and how long has it been? Because I mean, in all reality, man, I mean, you're 25 years old. That's phenomenal. I remember that was a short time ago for me, and it's. I mean, it's it's cool what you're doing, uh, and I think it can really uh, motivate a lot of people out there that might be listening to this podcast to really get off their ass and go do something. Yeah, no, and that's the reason I like doing these podcasts because, I mean, there's so many limiting beliefs out there through age, um, and it happened to me, um, you know, and I'm, I'm not this, you know, mega millionaire or anything, but uh, <clears throat> basically age doesn't really matter if you want to go do something. Right. And, and that's, what, that's kind of like what I'm hoping to do, inspire at least one person. But so, I'll uh, go back to your question, so what does it look like now? Um, we do, so we do wholesale, like 98% of our business is wholesale. We will buy and hold here, there, this and that, but wholesale business, um, we got a team of about 10, 11 people. And uh, we got a team of 10, 11 people, I say, because you know, sales come in, sales people come in, come out, things like that. But we have a couple, we have a, we have a transaction coordinator, 
We have five acquisitions guys who are doing, four of them are doing MLS. One of them is doing the off-market stuff, so going on appointments. We got two leads managers, um, a runner, uh, CO, and me. I don't think I missed anyone. Oh, and like a part-time kind of camera guy that does like some YouTube stuff that we're trying to do. But um, that's kind of like what the team looks like now. And now we're just going out there and wholesaling deals, um, both on market and off market. I don't know if you want to dive into that a little bit later, but that's kind of what it looks we're like now. I mean, so you started as an agent, or you kind of mentioned earlier in the call that you had a step a stepfather that flipped a house or two, and you're like, how do you do that? Right. But how did you really get started in real estate? I mean, did you go to get your real estate license and then go to a brokerage and hang your license there and you start buying and selling in front of the people? How did that work? Got it. No, so it was through that like local mentor. So I found out he flipped the house. He said someone sold it to him. I listened to the podcast, and then I'm like, all right, can you introduce me to that guy? He said, yeah, he actually he puts on the bottom of his email blast that he'll mentor people. So then I, you know, I didn't have any more money at the time. Um, so he actually let me borrow, I said like, let me borrow $2,500 to meet with this guy. Um, and that's exactly how I got started. And he, I wasn't an agent, I never became an agent. Um, Are you still not an agent? Still not an agent. Still not an agent. My man. All right. <laughs> still not an agent. Um, so he, his model was find deals off the MLS and wholesale them. The mentor guy. And um, that's exactly how I got started, man. He, you know, paid. It was five thousand for the mentoring for three months, I believe, or six months, something like that. And so twenty five hundred up front. I didn't have the money, so. Yeah, and then I would go meet him once a month in person, and he taught me, exa you know, exactly like how to find, how to find an MLS deal and how how to sell it, and that's exactly how I got started. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I know. I mean, one of the unique things that that Raul brought to the table at our mastermind was his ability to go to the MLS and find deals on the MLS and wholesale them because in every market it's going to be a little bit different. Um, some markets it works in, some 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 it doesn't. Phoenix market that I'm in right now, yes, you can do it. I think uh, from time to time there might be a deal here or there, but uh, it's very very difficult because of the just the market that we're in here in Phoenix. And I would think Miami would be the same way, but you're living proof that that's not the case. Yeah, I mean I've seen lately it's it's gotten like a lot a lot tougher. Um, we you know we still are finding deals and doing them, but it's. Um, just requiring double or triple the effort, double or triple the offers, <clears throat> and things like that. But it's, it's still possible. It's still possible. Yeah, it's not, yeah right. Uh, what, what, what do you think is the biggest obstacle you had to jump through at this point, up to this point? Um, as far as like in business and stuff? Yeah, the business, finding deal, uh, you know, I mean, just, you know, whatever roadblocks you had to push through up to the, up to now. Um, that's a awesome question because <laughs> um, there's so I'm many tests it bro I'm here to test it <laughs> no that's awesome I feel like every day there's one right but like, the biggest one I would say is like shifting uh, like to make a lot of money in this business you should be a business right like you could do it one one person you know like one off and to be a business you gotta like really think differently and, oh yeah because like going from hustler to business person, it, for me, it was a huge shift. Like, I, it, that's probably the biggest hurdle, meaning, you know, how do you split profits and how do you pay people and hire and da 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 da. Like, not, dude, that's the hardest part. Dude, I would say one of the hardest parts. Yeah, man, because not only is that hard to do, it's hard to like wrap your head around it to do it like right, you know? Right. So I would say that's probably the biggest challenge so far. That's, uh, I appreciate you sharing that because I think that's, you know, in, in my business, that, that was always a struggle. Now we've gone through five people, you know, just kind of, but I think that's what you have to do. Um, and that's just part of it. That's part of owning a business. You go from yeah. being a solopreneur to an entrepreneur. That's the transition growing things you have to go through. Um, we kind of, you know, do you think you're going to, as the markets change, and actually, have you heard of a book called Shift? Uh, by Gary Keller. Have you heard of that book before? 
Um, I believe I heard it in our mastermind. The Gary Carter is the Keller Williams guy. Right. Um, I, I haven't read it or anything, but. Um, no. So, it, 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 and all the listeners out there, and including yourself, I would recommend reading that book. Um, I read it back in 2015. Yeah, 2015, I read that book, and that was right when the markets were changing from Actually, being completely down under to now we're starting to go up again. But what that book talks about is how to survive a shifting market. You know, and, that, and that's the reality of it. We're all gonna go through market cycles in the real estate world, it doesn't matter where you're at, what part of the country, what market you're in, it goes through a cycle. And so what might work today in your business might not work tomorrow and you have to be under, you have to understand how to shift, right? So that's what that book's all about. I just thought I'd share that with you. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I wrote it down. I get it. <laughs> um, you're not, are you, are you a partner or do you, are you, is this your, your business? It's mine recently, um, about like eight months ago, um, a f- a friend of mine that we were friends like since high school, he came in and he's kind of like the COO role. Um, so I guess we're kind of partners but on paper. It's, it's not, but like we're basically partners at this point. Okay. Um, well, the reason why I was asking that question is what is your, what are your thoughts on partnerships? You know, there, you got two different ways to do it. You could be a, you could own the business yourself. Or you can be in a partnership. Do yeah. you feel like partnerships are good? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. I feel like that's not a, a thing people talk about often, right? Uh, right. I think that's awesome. So I think partnerships are good, depending on like goals. Um, so if your goal is to be really big, or if your goal is to generate tons of revenue, I would say partnerships can work. If your goal is to live a lifestyle business, meaning have a business to spend more time with family, um, travel, etc. Then I don't know. I don't think a partner would be good in wholesale, this specific business. Mm-hmm. But I think getting a partner, if you guys, you know, want a, a bunch of million dollars business, if you want tons of people and grow and do something crazy, I think definitely a partner helps. Cause it's hard to like consult all that by yourself. Yeah, it can certainly be a be a challenge. Um, you know, part of, you're right. There's definitely a difference between a lifestyle business. You know, it's all in goals. Yeah, that's for sure. What what is important to you? And I think as business owners, those goals change. Yeah. When you first started your company, what did you envision it to be? And how long ago was that? Five years? I got four years. Five years. Five years. Okay. What did I envision it? I I was so like young and stupid, and I still am. But I'm so young and stupid that like. I didn't even think of like, I didn't even think I was going to have like people working with me. I just thought of like, man, like, I guess like what I envisioned was make money without like having to like do it for someone else type of thing. Kind of like yeah, you don't have to work for yourself. Yeah, and like, I knew it probably wasn't forever going to be like that. I just, that was kind of like my first thought. I was like, what do I envision for myself? Okay, I want to do deals so that I don't have to like, work weekends for anybody else. Like, that's literally as simple as like, my little brain did that, you know? Yeah, and what do you think is gonna happen from here? You know, let's fast forward five years from today. What does the business look like then? Um, bro, I, I definitely wanna, I wanna reach, I don't know if it's gonna be this specific wholesale business. I wanna keep a wholesale business forever, but to answer your question, I. I want to get to like 100 million in something. I don't know if it's wholesale, I don't know if it's real estate commercial, I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, so as far as business, that's kind of, I'm just so young and I don't have anything else to do. Like, I'm, this is what I like for real, like, this is my hobby. So I, it's, it's not even about the money, it's more of like a challenge. Like, how, I, what's the person I'm going to become at 100 million? Like, how do I get there? How can I push through these barriers? Like. How can I uncover shit that I didn't even know I could do? Things like that. Right, right. And that's that's massive and super important to think big. I mean, yeah. you know, all the mentors out there talk about you gotta think big, you know, shoot for the moon and really try to get there. Because even if you come up short, you'll probably still be a lot greater ahead than where you are today. Right. Um, but also breaking it down into bite-sized chunks, right? So, you know, want to get to 100 million. Okay, well, if you gotta get 
get to 100 million, let's get to 1 million first, right? Yeah. Once you get to 500,000 first. For all the listeners out there, it's like setting these achievable goals that are that are really possible. Yeah. Um, that was that was a huge takeaway for me. A long time ago, I was like, I wanted to be, I, like from my first year in real estate, as an agent, I was like, I'm gonna do 100 houses. And I remember the broker at the time was like, yeah, that's a great goal, but I mean, let's be real, that's a shit ton of houses, that's a lot, right? That's way more. So that's not really an achievable goal, at least it wasn't for me at that time. So, um, you know, just making sure that everything's in check. No, that's awesome. I, um, and I always say, sorry, I always say like, people start with like these huge goals sometimes, and I think that's awesome. Um, but I would say like make a goal that actually excites you, and it could be like superficial, right? So, like I said, when I was that age, probably when you started, I don't know, but like, it doesn't have to be a goal of like I want to change the world. It, it could be a goal like I want a new car, or I want to move out of my house, or you know I want a different apartment, like. And then you work towards that, and then when you get there, then you can start setting it a little bit bigger and say, okay, now I want to like teach people or whatever. But you know, I'm a big fan of like, dude, even if it's superficial, if it gets you excited, that is your goal. You know? Yeah, I agree to that. What What do you think about this? So you're in Miami. I mean, you want to move outside of Miami? What's your thoughts on investing outside of your own market or on, of your own backyard? I, I, it excites me. So the answer is yes. Um, I, there's plenty of business to do here. Definitely, we can go like really deep and build like a really nice business here. Um, but it excites me to go other places, not just for other for the sake of going to other places, but for the sake of like having a business model that can you know be replicatable. Like that, that shit excites me. I think that's super cool. I mean, I don't know. That, that's my take on that. So yes, I definitely want to go other places. What other markets are you looking at now? Right now, different parts of Florida. Um, yeah. There's just so many markets in Florida that are like the top growing markets in the whole US. Um, Jacksonville's a big one. Uh, Tampa's huge. Orlando's got, Orlando has a ton of um, new population coming in because the hospitals are building. Cape Coral's also a really big one. That's like a smaller uh, B or C tier market that they're, bringing the, they're building the biggest VA hospital um, you know, on this side of the, the US. So there's like tons of opportunity in Florida. So I'm focusing now on building different, you know, systems to be able to go to these places. Are you afraid that over, you know, in a short amount of time here, Florida is just gonna sink into the ocean? <laughs> <laughs> I think about that, honestly. Um, if anything, Miami would be the first ones to sink. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. But right. Um, yeah, definitely a danger. I see that being like a, a realistic danger like in 20 years. I mean, that's like yeah. what, what people say, that's what I've read. Um, so I'm just going to try to make a bunch of money before 20 years is up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 20 years in all reality, 20 years is not that long, right? Yeah. 20 years will fly by very, very quickly. And I think it, it's going to be longer than 20 years before Florida falls off. I mean, I'm going to be a lot of very, very upset people with that. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I mean, Florida, Florida's great though, man. You know, I was just there coming back from a DR. I uh, stayed there for a day. I missed you guys because you guys flew a little bit later. But right. and it, it is a very cool place. One I don't know a whole lot about, but I'd like to learn a lot more and possibly even buy something there. I, yeah. I think you know, um, unless it falls in, <laughs> unless it sinks. That's did, probably. Wait, did you end up like going out and stuff here, by the way? Um, yeah. No. Well. We were only there for a day, so we got in at like 9 a.m. and we ended yeah. up leaving and going to fly back to Phoenix at 9 p.m. So gotcha. we went and we, you know, had had lunch and had a couple of drinks, uh, just kind of walking down the strip. We had just watched that uh, Versace oh. show on Netflix and yeah, yeah. Uh, actually like stood in front of his house where he got shot and that was up. Yeah. Cool, but it's pretty cool. Um, right South Beach. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Right there on South Beach. Yeah, down in South Beach. Yeah. Right. And it was the, the weather wasn't great, so you know. Right. But it was man, it was a lot of fun. It's a great place. I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, have you thought about investing outside of single family? I mean, doing any other sort of apartments or commercial buildings, anything like that? Or are you staying in single family for now? For now, staying in single family. For now, staying okay. in single family. Um, I thought about it, and uh, definitely something in the future I'd want to do, but 
but not just single family. I just see like there's still tons of opportunity in single family. Um, and it's just like what we see every day, you know? Right, yeah, no, and that, that's absolutely true. There's a ton of opportunity there. There's everybody needs somewhere to live, right? So that's <laughs> the most important part. Um, last question here before, I think we're getting closer on time here. Last question to kind of figure out, um, what, what do you think the impact is that you're on your market? You know, like right now, what are you feeling like is going on in that Miami market? What, what is the impact um, of the market on your business? Got it. So, okay. So basically what, um, what, what is the market? How does the market like influence like our business, making money, you know, yep. operating all this stuff? Yep. I, I, I try not to blame the market, right? I think us as like real estate entrepreneurs, we try to be like, no, the market, whatever. And to some extent, we can't control a bunch of shit. Now, definitely it impacts the effort level of us as a company, right? So when there's a tons of foreclosures, for example, um, you know, we make 10 offers and we get one deal. There's not a lot of foreclosures. We got to make 50 offers to get one deal. So it doesn't change that we can make the same or even more amounts of money. I would say the market impacts <clears throat> directly, uh, it's a direct correlation of our effort as a uh, business owner, as, you know, agent, as acquisition, as, as sales. We definitely have to work a lot harder to get a lot harder and smarter to get the same amount of deals, um, income, things like that. So, and a couple shifts here and there, but so yeah, the market impacts effort. That's like my take on that. Yeah, I think that's probably true. <laughs> I don't know how you yeah. feel about it. I'm actually curious to know how you feel, because I know you've been, you do a lot of like the off market and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we, we pull a lot of off market stuff. I mean, the markets are changing, but yeah. for the wholesale business or any sort of distressed asset type of business, there's always opportunities. Yeah. You just gotta make sure that you can find those opportunities and find the marketing channel. So in our business, it's a, it's a direct correlation of marketing effort, right? If you're not into marketing and you're able to get in front of these distressed assets, then you're gonna have a higher probability and a better, much better chance of getting a lot more deals. Right. So, you know, it's always playing with different marketing channels, figuring out what's working, what's not working, you know, making those tweaks here and there. And I think that's an ever changing cycle. So. Yeah, no, I agree, man. And uh, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't like to say that like the market's effect, but in our business, it, it has something, you know, like if there's less inventory, there's less inventory. And, oh yeah, hundred uh, percent. It's certainly important. You yeah. can't ignore the fact that the market has an impact of some sort on, on your business because it does. It's just, you know, yeah. How do you, you know, how exactly. do you, uh, how do you shift? Right. Exactly. How do you shift when the markets change? It shouldn't be used as an excuse to like not make more money. Basically, if there's less inventory, go to different places. If there's yep. if that marketing channel's not working, do another one. You know, so it's like it's it's not an excuse, but it's definitely I think it's good for us entrepreneurs to understand what what happens you know like what you should do yeah absolutely so uh, five years from now we're gonna still see you there in, in miami so you flipping houses so yeah, you're doing that yeah man i love this place dude <laughs> i really do i love it man uh it Puerto Rico, i just love it here i gotta come back and visit you here pretty soon yeah let's do it man <laughs> have to. All right, so I appreciate you sharing the information, giving give the listeners a little bit more about what's going on in Miami, about your business, about what you had to go through to get to where you're at now, a little bit of what you're, you're planning on doing, staying in that market, you know, or maybe expanding out, um, and just continuing to crush it. You know, I, I know you guys are doing some good things down there. So um, are you ready for a lightning round? We're coming up on time. Yeah, let's do it. All right. What is your hashtag invest this tip? To keep our listeners moving forward, if you can give them one. Stay persistent, man. Just don't give up. I know it's so cliche, but just don't give up. You know what? That's so good. It, you hear that from everybody, right? Don't yeah. give up. But if if you never give up, you can never be beaten. You know, the only way that you that you can lose is if you stop trying. So appreciate yeah. you sharing. Yeah, just to add like a little snippet to that is like make sure you do the right shit and don't give up doing the right shit, you know? That that's that's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Do you have a, a favorite book that's had a massive impact on your life or your business or both? 10X Rule, Grant Cardone. Boom, yep. That's a good one. I recommend everybody reading it if you haven't already. Just what, about, yeah, 